Hi, I'm Alex McCrickard, and this is the fishing report for the month of October in Virginia. Fall is my favorite time of the year to fish for trout across the state, and October is the best month of the year to target brown trout in pre-spawn mode. In this report, I'm going to cover the basics of brown trout biology and what makes fall an especially unique time for this species. After covering some of the biological factors that influence brown trout behavior during this time of the year, I'll cover some of the tactics and techniques to effectively catch these fish with streamers and a fly rod. Additionally, I'll highlight some of the top locations to target brown trout across the state and give updates on agency trout stocking. The cooling of air temperatures and water temperatures that fall brings is a cue for brown trout to begin their spawning rituals. Brown trout typically spawn once water temperatures fall into the mid to upper 40s. And in Virginia, this typically occurs in the middle of November, but could be earlier or later depending on a river or stream's temperature regime. Prior to the spawn, brown trout become particularly aggressive as they compete amongst each other for the right spawning habitat and additionally for the right mate. Brown trout exhibit sexual dimorphism. The males will look drastically different than the females. And it's this spawning rituals in the fall, the male browns will put on these deep pumpkin orange hues along their bellies. Sometimes they'll have a yellow buttery tint to them. And they have these uh, dark to bright red spots. And really this is a, in an effort to attract a, a female to spawn with. Um, uh, additionally, browns tend to be piscivorous, which means that they feed on other fish. Um, and while, you know, rainbow trout also eat other fish, studies have shown that brown trout become piscivorous at younger ages and smaller sizes than rainbow trout. So it's, it's really this piscivorous diet of a brown trout combined with their pre-spawn aggression that makes streamer fishing with a fly rod particularly effective during the fall season. All right, doing a little fall streamer fishing out here on the Jackson. And this is what it's all about, finding a big, pre-spawn brown like this, aggressive male, inhaled the streamer, give him a quick drink. This fish taped in at just at, just at 21 inches. So beautiful big wild trout to get out here. And October is one of the best times to streamer fish. We'll let this fish go. Streamer fishing is a great way to target larger trout um, that are gonna reside in, in our rivers and streams in Virginia. Um, and again, these flies, are, streamers are flies that imitate smaller forage fish, whether those be dace, chubs, sculpins. Um, and really, uh, they come in a variety of different sizes. There's a lot of different types of streamers out there. But when I'm fishing these streamers, I like fishing them on a heavier fly rod. So this is a 10 foot six weight. Um, it, that heavier rod is gonna give me a little more backbone to turn over some of those larger streamers. Um, a lot of times on smaller rivers, I'll fish a floating line with a weighted streamer that's got either a bead head or a cone head. Um, and if I'm fishing a larger river, like some of our tailwaters, like the Smith or the Jackson, uh, I, and on higher flows, I might fish a full sinking line or a sink tip. Uh, you don't need to have light leaders. Heavier leaders are important. So think 0X, 1X, 2X, anything in that eight, 10 pound test line is gonna be really good. And streamers come in a variety of different sizes. Um, the articulated ones are really good at mimicking some of the larger forage fish. They've got two hooks um, and they're going to be larger. They're going to push a lot of water. Some of my favorites are some of the patterns that are, were developed by Western fly tires like Kelly Gallup or Charlie Craven. His, uh, Kelly's Peanut Envy has always worked really well for me. I like that in tan, yellow and white. And Charlie Craven's Double Gonga is a great wool head streamer pattern. It's got some rubber legs works really well in olive, tan, white. And really, uh, uh, typically I'm throwing darker flies on darker days. So if it's kind of cloudy, a little rainy, the water's a little off color, I might be thinking about blacks, browns, olives. And then on brighter, sunnier days, I'm thinking tans, vanillas, white colored streamers. You don't have to fish articulated streamers. Um, a lot of times, some of the first streamers people will fish are woolly buggers. They're tried and true, they work great. Um, browns, olives, yellows, whites, all work really well. Um, and again, this is some of the best way to mimic some of the forage fish in a, in a stream. So when I'm fishing streamers and I'm approaching a pool, I like to first start by quartering my cast up river. It allows my fly to kind of sink down into the run before I start to strip. So I'll get a cast out, I'll quarter it up river. 
and then it kind of gets down and what I really like to do is start to strip that fly back towards me like this, moving it through the water. Again, you're mimicking um, uh, a forage fish or, or you know an injured sculpin or an, an injured chub. You want to get that reaction strike. I'm trying to burn that fly back at a diagonal angle towards me. Oftentimes a pause between your strips can be beneficial and trigger a strike. Um, now, as far as strip speed goes, in warmer water, I'm going to want to be stripping that fly much faster, right? Fish are going to be more apt to come out and chase it. In slower water, like in the winter, I'll let my streamer sort of just sort of bottom bounce and I'll do some very light strips and kind of twitch them on occasion, right? So I'm really going to want to be paying attention to the conditions on the river when I'm fishing these. Um, another technique with the streamer that you can do is cast it directly perpendicular to the bank and bring it back right across the fish that way. Sometimes that'll um, uh, create a reaction strike as well. And one of the fun things about streamer fishing is you can actually work your way downriver as well. By casting downriver and sort of stripping the fly and letting it swing at the same time, and I'm able to kind of cover water that way. And sometimes as your streamer's swinging out, you'll get a strike that way. But again, you want to be moving that fly. You're trying to mimic that injured forage fish to entice that trout to take. In Virginia, we're really blessed with an abundance of trout water and opportunities to fish for both wild stream bred trout and stock trout. Some of the destinations that I would recommend for targeting fall brown trout across the state include Mossy Creek, which is a limestone spring creek in the Shenandoah Valley, just south of Harrisonburg. This is a technical stream with lots of aquatic vegetation, but bottom bouncing your streamers in the channels and lanes can produce some nice fish. Tailwaters, like the Smith River below Philpot Dam, are a great place to fish for trout. There's approximately 31 miles of special regulation trout water on the Smith, produces a lot of nice fish, especially in the fall. The Jackson River below Lake Moomaw is an excellent tailwater in the western portion of the state with wild stream bred brown trout and wild rainbow trout. The fishery thrives from Gathright Dam downstream to the town of Covington. In southwest Virginia in Smythe County, the south fork of the Holston River is a great opportunity for folks to target trophy sized brown trout. And if you live in the central part of the state, the South River, a freestone river with limestone influence in Waynesboro, is a great opportunity to fish for both stocked rainbow and brown trout. Pretty rainbow here. Rainbows eat the streamers too. And a uh, nice one to get out here on a crisp fall day. Send them home. Congratulations to local angler Jen Goodale for catching these recent brown trout in the month of October on the South River. She caught these fish in the downtown section on the south. These are wonderful brown trout to catch in the fall. Congratulations, Jen. For additional information on access and regulations for any of the water bodies we just mentioned, visit the individual water bodies pages on our website and in the link in the caption below. Also, if fishing for, tr for stocked trout is something you prefer to do, keep in mind that October marks the return of our trout stocking all across the state. Our agency staff has been hard at work transporting and stocking catchable sized trout all across the state. Visit the trout stocking page in the link below to find a body of water that was recently stocked near you. Thanks for tuning in to this month's fishing report. Hopefully these tips and tricks can help you be successful when streamer fishing for trout on a body of water near you. Also, don't forget to take our Virginia Trout Slam Challenge where we're challenging anglers to try to catch a brown, a brook trout, and a rainbow trout all in one day. Anglers that successfully complete the challenge and apply on our Go Outdoors website will be rewarded with a Trout Slam sticker. We'll see you on the water.